The world will do what you want it to do, but you have to pay the price. And that's the thing that people don't want to do. And the price is very high. Do I feel like a sentinel? Do I feel like a bodyguard? I think that that is a very apt way of describing me. I think of myself as a defender. Yes, I would say I'm a defender. And I don't mind being in the minority. It doesn't bother me in the least. And I have many archetypal examples. For example, during the time of Adolf Hitler, there's a famous photograph of the car factory where everybody is like this, with the exception of one man. He was sent to Russia, of course. I'm happy to be that one man. This is my nature. I do, think, I do think my paintings defend a certain uh, ethical position, I would say, without being uh, oppressively dogmatic. I'm not selling anything. I'm not selling a concept. But they are based on a kind of um, structural um, fidelity. The paint, the, the color is, is a color of modesty. It has an interior light that has to be pulled out. And you can describe this as a light that is absorbing everything into itself like a net or a light that has to be pulled out of the painting. Either way is working for me. I have no dogma about how people look at my paintings, but I am very much connected to the example of Cezanne. And in temperament, I may be quite similar because Cezanne was obdurate, he was a curmudgeon. I would say though that my work is very serious, well it is very serious, that's clear, extremely structural, but it includes emotion and then you know Cezanne said all I have is my little thrill. I would say that my thrill is quite big, you know there's a lot of um, I think there's a lot of sex in my paintings. There's a lot of this kissing, caressing, uh, enveloping, bumping into each other. And this is, of course, a problem in the world as a metaphor. How do we bump into each other? How do we negotiate our edges? And my work is dedicated to edges. How they get there how they exist, how they coexist, how they assist each other. This is the subject of my work. If you want to be a young artist or a young writer, you are a writer. I don't need to tell you how difficult that is. It's about as crazy as taking a giant frying pan and smacking yourself on the head with it 10 times every day. So this is what you have decided to do. And the odds are as follows. You go to art school, one in 10. You go from a beginning course to the bachelorette, one in 10. That's one in 100. Then you go to the masters, one in 10. One in 1,000. You're already one in 1,000. You, then you're on the street. Fuck, I'm on the street. Then what? 
I have to get a studio, I have to get paint. Who's going to help me? You know, you know the answer? Nobody. And then you go, try and get in a gallery. At least one in ten. That's one in ten thousand. So you've chosen to do something really crazy and never practice victimhood. Like, I never said, oh, I'm not getting into Yvonne Lambert. Yvonne Lambert had a gallery I wanted to show in that gallery because it was the best gallery in Paris. It was the one that I respected the most, but he didn't have an interest in me. But I didn't go around saying, oh, he doesn't have an interest in me because I'm Irish. No, forget all that shit. The world will do what you want it to do, but you have to pay the price. And that's the thing that people don't want to do. And the price is very high. This balance between confidence and humility. I think belief is extremely humble, but it doesn't include doubt. I know a priest, he's French, he has no doubts, but he's extremely humble. Uh, I'm not saying I have no doubts regarding religion. Um, I believe in God on Monday and on Tuesday, I'm not quite sure. And then on Wednesday, I'm back again. But I don't think that doubt is, is um, very, very helpful. And the artists I admire were artists of great conviction. You know, I'm a great admirer of Picasso, for example. And he was an artist of great conviction, as am I. And one can argue this, and one can argue uh, about the virtue of doubt. I think I, I think I am a very open person. I don't have fixed opinions about things. You know, I'm, I'm willing to uh, be open. I'm willing to listen. I generally like to consider myself as being um, centrist because I feel that that's the only um, living position. If you are left or right, you're automatically an ideologue. And it's ideologues that ruin the world because they don't listen to anybody else. And all their responses are canned, automatic. And they look for information to enforce their, their prejudice, their opinion. We live in this world of opinion, and I'm not so interested in opinion. I'm more interested in fact, or the facts of history, what really happened. And I would say that my faith in painting, my belief in its goodness is made of tremendous conviction.